Success Insight shares the stories of the people with passion and drive who make things happen in the world. Here's your host, Howard Fox. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Success Insight podcast. Today's episode of Success Insight is another addition to our Outdoor Adventure Series. Now, it's a pleasure to have Scott Luthold return as our guest today. Scott is an adventurer and founder of Four Expedition. For more than 30 years, Scott has been exploring the natural world on foot, driving and riding off-road vehicles, riding touring and mountain bikes, and even paddling watercraft. His adventures have taken him to the remote corners of the world. Now, this past week, I reached out to Scott because, you know, I had seen an article that was shared by him on a Facebook page, and it got me to thinking about how do we prepare for our outdoor adventures? And Scott, I thought just a fantastic opportunity to bring you back and kind of tap into your expertise. So welcome back to Success Insight and the Outdoor Adventure Series. Thanks, Howard. It's so great to be here again. I think this is a really great subject to cover and so important right now. We're heading into summer soon. Everybody's going to be outdoor adventuring. And really, people need to have everything set up just right, just in case you know things can go wrong. Just have things set up just right. Well, you know, as a member of the Team 4X family, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, this article that you posted, it was on your Facebook page about outdoor adventures and perhaps when things don't go right or as you expected. And I got to thinking, you know, I'm going out to Death Valley this coming weekend. I want to spend the night out there. So I'm going out for sunset. I spend the night, have to sleep out there and then take pictures and then pick up and come home. I got a friend coming into the Las Vegas area where I'm from in May. She wants to go out to Death Valley. And I got to thinking, I wonder how prepared I am or what do I need to prepare? There's a lot to talk about here, isn't there? There is, especially right now. You said you're heading out to Death Valley and there was a recent tragedy of a young couple, a Tucson couple. The husband perished out there in the desert and things can go wrong and things do happen. And this is an issue that came up that's kind of very close to my heart because we have the Team 4X membership and quite a few of our members are in Arizona and some of them are in Tucson. So the couple that was out there got stranded. They have a Subaru Outback and they were a young adventurer couple. They could have very easily been members of Team 4X. So it's it's something that's very close to me. And I definitely feel for that family and the surviving wife. Her name's Emily. I think this is such an important topic right now, especially considering in the last year or two, there's been so many people entering the marketplace, especially with what's going on in the world with the pandemic and so forth. There's been just astronomical sales in off-road and camping type vehicles. There's a lot more people getting out into wilderness and they really need to be prepared for whatever might come at them when they get out there. Something that I found interesting was, again, with this article, and again, thinking about myself, not that I always want to think about myself. However, the advice that you have to give is important, not only for the novice. Like you said, people are entering this market, they get out, they put the family in the car, and they go for a nice long drive in the country. And something happens, it could be the middle of the summer, it could be the dead of winter, things just happen. Or they're like this couple, they were experienced outdoor adventurers. Absolutely. They absolutely were. And they've done this many, many times before. They were in a very, very remote part of the desert. From what I understand, they ended up with two flat tires, which stranded their vehicle. And we can go into that a little bit more if you like, but um, sure, anything can happen. In their case, and I'm not here to criticize anybody, it, it can happen to anyone. All you can do is just be as prepared as you possibly can for whatever might come down the pike, but you can't always prepare for everything. In their case, they had two flat tires. They were out in the middle of nowhere. They left their vehicle. And things progressed and turned out the way they did. I'm wondering whether there are the essentials of, you know, you're a, let's just say an experienced adventurer Mm -hmm. or you're a novice or inexperienced adventurer. I would put myself in the novice level at this point. Mm -hmm. What are the essentials that both parties would need to have? Is there overlap or are they the same? Do you treat people differently because of that level of experience? I don't think so. I think just about everyone, no matter how experienced you are or novice you are, can face the same issues. I mean, there can be anything that goes wrong. You could have flash floods. 
You could have, like you said, you could have uh, freak uh, blizzards. You can have automobile breakdowns, anything. And so there are just, in my opinion, there are basic essentials. There's health essentials and there's recovery essentials. And so I've, I've kind of made a list here of some of the basics. If you'd like, I can go down what I would consider to be health essentials and then recovery essentials having to do with your vehicle. Yeah, let's definitely do that. I think that's a good start. I mean, first and foremost, it does all depend on where you are and what the circumstances are of the adventure you're going on. As you mentioned, you could be in a very cold climate or you could be in a very hot climate, but you kind of have to customize your kit, if you will, for those experiences. But essentially, what they say is you should have one gallon of water per person per day. Now, if you have a party of four in your vehicle, two parents and two children or something like that, that's four gallons of water per person per day. I generally bring between three and six gallons of water. I have these things called water bricks. They're stackable. They're three and a half gallons. I might bring anywhere up to four to six of those from my experience. And I end up going home with a lot of water, but that's okay. If you have something like a water brick, they can lay down, they're stackable, you can refill them, and you can ensure that you have enough water for anything that goes wrong. You also need to have some way to transport it if you ended up having to trek across land like this couple did. So you do need to have something like Nalgene bottles or a backpack or something like that that holds a hydration system or something. You should also bring, in my opinion, even if you're just going car camping, you should always bring high protein compact foods, protein bars, things that won't go bad. They're not perishable items, things that just can last whether you use them or not. So I've got a, if you will, a pantry, and I keep a lot of that stuff in there in my car camping kit. If for some reason I decide I'm going to go on a a day hike, I can pull some of those protein bars out of there. But in the case, if you're having to trek across land for some sort of a recovery, you can take those kinds of things along and have plenty of protein that you can consume and you don't have to worry about it being perishable. Just a question there. So not this past weekend, but the weekend before I went up to Valley of Fire. Mm-hmm. early morning. And I started out about 830. And I would say by 930, it was hot. Mm-hmm. And yep. I had my water portable. I have a backpack that holds three gallons of water. Thank heavens for that. And I saw people walking with they were first of all, they were in flip flops, <laughs> tennis shoes. They had a bottle of water, one of those little small plastic bottles of water that you get in a convenience store. And I kept thinking to myself, are they crazy or what? Yeah. So I get the water, but, you know, say you do have to go on an unexpected hike or you're, or it's an expected hike. I mean, you, you know you're going to do it. Mm-hmm. Is there a rule of thumb in how much of the protein you take with you, how much food? Well, I think the rule of thumb is to have it inside your body. Okay. Right. So first and foremost, before you depart, you should consume some and make sure that your body's got the energy so that your body doesn't start to... Uh, lose energy before you consume more and get it in your in your body to process. So, you know, having water in your system, having protein in your system before you depart is probably a pretty good idea. And on that note of water, there's no way that you're going to carry enough water more than likely on your back to get you to where you're going if it's a long distance. Right. Now, you could be in the desert where there's no water that you can filter. However, I do always carry with me, I have a, even in my car camping, I bring a a lightweight backpack. It's a rucksack type backpack. I've got a hydration system in there. And I also bring a Sawyer water filter and the Sawyer water filters are very small, very lightweight. And if you do come across a water source that you believe is potable, you can fill up water and replenish your water supply. So having a filtration system is also essential when it comes to your sort of rucksack bug out little backpack that you take with you when you're in a car camping situation, whether you use it or not. You know, you have to have all of these things kind of in a pack that's ready to go just in case. I also recommend electrolytes and energy gel. You can buy these little packets of energy gel. And when you're running low on energy because you're out there trekking across land or something like that, you can squeeze that energy gel in your mouth and it'll give you the extra energy that you need, probably the boost that you need to get just a little bit further. And just a little bit further might be all you need. I've climbed mountains in the Sierras and, you know, getting to the top is one thing, but you don't realize now you have to come back down and coming back down can be just as treacherous, if not more treacherous. You know, you can come upon obstacles that you were unforeseen. And that happened to me coming off of Mount Ritter in the Sierras. 
as we were coming back down, we had a route that one of the people with us had been on before. And we came across a just a deluge of water going across this canyon. We had to ford across it on foot. And it was very, very dangerous. Thousand foot drops, only a hundred yards downstream, things like that. And you know, we sat there for a long time calculating whether or not we could make it across this thing. We could have been stuck up there for a couple of days. So that's scary. You just, just never know. It and it can be very scary. Yeah. 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 So water filtration systems, things like that. Fire starter. Don't just bring one lighter. And don't just bring matches, bring two or three different types of fire sources. You never know if one's going to work or one's not going to work. Something's going to get wet. Don't depend on just one source of fire. And a lot of people like to rub sticks together and things like that. I mean, that's fairly unrealistic for a lot of people, but it's, you know, just having plenty of different fire sources and flammable material that you can use to start a fire is also very helpful. You know, I have to uh, share when I was first doing my research, which is for our listeners, this is how I met Scott because he's doing the outdoor adventure. He had a Subaru. I was researching, okay, how do I take my Subaru out? But I remember the fire starters and I have one of those little Flintstones. Yeah. And then I have this, I don't know what you call it. It, lo- it looks like poo, but you, it's, it's <laughs> twisted, but it, you actually can untwist strands of it. And there's your kindling right there. Yeah. And I have this USB lighter. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah. The USB lighters are great. I love those things. And, you know, uh, frankly, Howard, you may never need to use that. That's so true. So true. It's just having it there gives you that peace of mind that you're ready. You're prepared. In the case of in a sunny environment like you going out to Death Valley, there's two really important things. Obviously, sunscreen. I don't think I need to tell anybody they need to bring sunscreen along. However, what people probably don't stop to think about, and I use this for my stand-up paddleboard expeditions, a 50 SPF hoodie. Uh, I believe mine is made out of bamboo, but what's really incredible about these very lightweight 50 sunblock hoodies are that you could be in the dead of day at noon and touch the outside surface of it and it'll be cold. You could be in bright sunlight. They truly keep you nice and cool and they can get wet. And when they're damp and wet, obviously that's going to cool you off even more. And you put that over your head and then over the top of that, you should really bring along a large brimmed hat. A lot of people that watch my channel, they see me wearing a cowboy hat and I usually wear it with the brims curled up on the sides. But, you know, if I had to trek across a large span of land, I would tip that down and have a nice shoulder and neck shade. That was one of the best investments I ever made. It was and I have it in Australia. I can't remember, but it was one of these Tilly hats. Oh, yeah. And Those I are mean, great. it's not completely wide brim, but it's, it's, I think it's good enough. But mm-hmm. the hoodie, now I know that that's one of my first investments after this call. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember who makes the one that I have, but it's a fly fishing brand. Okay. And uh, generally, fly fishermen use it. Excellent. But um, you, know, you put that on and it'll definitely keep you warm. And that, you know, that brings me to first aid. I've got two first aid kits that I keep with me at all times. I've got a vehicle first aid kit and I have a rucksack first aid kit. My vehicle first aid kit is a a full first aid kit. It has everything in there you could possibly need. And it's, it's big and bulky and whatnot. But in my rucksack, I have a portable first aid kit that is ready to go if I need to hit the trail. Even if I'm just going for a day hike, I always bring a first aid kit in that backpack. And it's always sitting down in the bottom. I never remove it. Uh, If I use something out of it, I replenish it. But having two first aid kits, one for car camping and one for backpacking, but having them both with you when you're on a car camping trip can be a really valuable piece of equipment. That's good. Good. Yeah. And then I already mentioned a lightweight backpack. Let's talk about communication. There's two things that I think could have helped the couple that was out in the desert. One of them is having a two-way radio. Mine's by a company called Bofang. I got it on Amazon for 25 bucks. So for, so for as little as 25 bucks, it comes with a charger and you can tune into different channels and communicate with people up to two, three miles away. So that's a really great thing. And then the other thing that I think is probably even more valuable is a GPS emergency locator. My products are Spot Gen 3 and I pay, I think, 15 bucks a month for a subscription. And there are many months that I've, you know, I've never, I mean, I've only used it a few times, but what's really cool is that When a satellite's going over, you can communicate with your family and let your family know you're okay. You can have a group of people that you send a thing, you know, you can send out a message to saying, hey, this is where I'm at if you're coming out to meet me here. So, you know, if you're going camping and you have a friend coming out later, 
or you can have an emergency system that if you activate it and you have to flip open this rubber thing, and you, there's a couple steps that you have to go through to hit this button. But if you hit that button, a helicopter is going to come for you and you have to be prepared to pay for that. But hey, if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you're stuck and you're, you broke your ankle or something, having that available to you is very valuable. And I'm not sure if we, you know, if we'll find out if this couple had something like that, but if they didn't, it would have been a very valuable piece of equipment. I love that idea. And I was actually thinking about it. And again, just perhaps toy this around in your head and, or maybe it's too off the wall, but if I had this equipment, would a service be helpful to, that would collect, you know, say a group of people that they're going wherever they're going. Mm -hmm. Okay. They don't even know each other, but they're just out there. But have a centralized service that you check in with that says, hey, I'm Howard, I'm in Death Valley, I'm Scott, I'm up in heaven knows where, and this is where I'm at. Because like, I'm single, I'm out here in Vegas, I don't really share with people where I'm at, where I'm going. And, and I'm wondering if a service like that would be helpful to just let people know. Generally, yeah, I mean, generally, you should tell somebody, a neighbor or someone where you're going or leave a note on your, you know, on your counter at home. So if somebody uh, does suspect that you're missing, there's information and in itinerary left somewhere. And when you go to national parks or into wilderness areas, generally, you have to check in or sign in and leave some kind of an itinerary. And I know the couple that went into the death, went into Death Valley left an itinerary. From what I understand, they were found or their vehicle was found in an area that was not on their itinerary. So things do come up and things change. And people do change their itineraries from time to time. But having some kind of a, a system, whether it be a, a technology system or just a, a word of mouth system to share with somebody, hey, uh, you know, in your case, you're a member of Team 4X. You could log into Team 4X member portal and just post a thing saying, hey, I'm, I'm Howard, member number, blah, blah, blah. I'm heading out to this area and I'll be out here for three days. And then when you come back, you could sign back in and say, hey, I got back in. I like that. I like that. Yeah, something like that. So if you don't have you're not you don't have a lot of neighbors or you're not friends with your neighbors or you don't have a lot of family around, um, just so there's somebody, a community that you belong to where you can just post that this is what I'm doing, this is where I'm going, and this is when I intend to be home. You know? That's good. Very, very important. Another thing that I highly recommend people bring along, I have two sets of binoculars. I have a vehicle set, which are much, much larger, and I have a very small set that I bring along in my rucksack. So when, if you are making some attempt to traverse across a piece of land, uh, you can use the binoculars to keep your eye on where you're going. You can look at potential obstacles that could be between you and that destination. So for instance, uh, you, could, you could think that you, you can head in a particular direction, but you come across a 2000 foot cliff or a river that's not easily crossed. So having the ability to be able to see distances helps. You just kind of triggered another thought. You haven't mentioned compass yet. Yes. I mean, having a compass is very important. I think that it's easy to get turned around. And I didn't have a compass on this list, and it's absolutely something that should be on your list. And you should know how to use it. You can use a compass on your Apple Watch, um, assuming that you have power. Exactly. Uh, or you can use you know, a compass on your watch. But if you have a real compass that is not powered by any batteries or anything like that. And you know how to use it, which by the way, there are a lot of towns and communities, probably in Vegas, where you can go and you can take an orienteering course. And I know REI offers those. Generally speaking, in a lot of different communities, they have specific orienteering courses where you can learn how to use them. And I think that's really important. And if you have an iPhone or a smartphone with you and it's fully charged, take pictures of where you've gone, you know, looking behind you and take pictures of where you're going. That can also help you so that you get a mile down the road or you get the mile down the trail and let's say the trail starts to disappear. You can turn around and look at your phone and the pictures on your phone and say, oh, okay, that's where I'm headed. You know what I mean? Or that's where I was. That's a great idea. And by the way, I don't know if I ever shared with you, but I actually live right above the REI. Oh, you do? In, in Henderson. <laughs> <laughs> like literally above it? Literally right above it. So <laughs> That could be dangerous. <laughs> I that I know it is. Well, but thank, you know, thank God I took some of your list and, and I go earlier uh, last year and I went down there. Okay. I need this. I need this. And I need, you know, so that's great. Thanks to you and REI. Yeah. 
You know, another thing that nobody really thinks about anymore to bring along is a small handheld mirror. Uh, and a mirror can be critical yeah. for having somebody be able to find you easily or drawing somebody's attention. Let's say you see somebody a mile or two away in their vehicle. You might be able to get their attention. That can be very helpful. And then with that, a whistle. Carry a whistle. You know, I, I was just going to ask. I was thinking of a bell, but yeah, a whistle. A whistle yeah. that you can blow really loudly. So if somebody, you can hear somebody in the distance, let's say you're stuck somewhere trapped under a rock. Like uh, I forget the gentleman's name, but there was a story in the past about a gentleman that got stuck in a canyon under a rock. Right. If you had a whistle, I remember that. You know, if, some, if you can hear some people in the distance and you can blow a whistle, uh, that can also save your life. You know, something simple, yeah. little simple plastic whistle. Three things that I think are also very important, paracord, trekking poles, and an emergency blanket. You know, one of those, um, uh, I'm not sure what they're made of. They're usually like a foil or something like that. But you can use those three things, each on their own, paracord for whatever you might need, trekking poles just to help you along. Uh, from what I understand, trekking poles can reduce the stress on your knees by up to 30%. And then the emergency blanket, but you can use those three things together, stretch the paracord between two trees, you know, hang the blanket over the paracord and use the trekking poles different ways. And, and you can create yourself a nice break from the sun. You know, when I was, again, up in Dahlia Fire and I was doing the one hike, I mean, it was only a mile and a half. Not bad at all, but it was up, down, over. I was the only guy out there that had trekking poles. Hmm. And I will tell you, I did not feel like I was the dork. No, no. They're so very I, thank tight. God. I mean. <clears throat> Especially if you have a backpack on your back. Yeah. It's hot. You have the potential of becoming dehydrated. You can trip over loose rocks, especially out in the West. In the West, the, road, the roads and trails are very rough with a lot of loose rock. You can easily twist your ankle. In fact, I was trail running in the bottom of the Grand Canyon at Havasu Falls a number of years ago which I shouldn't have probably been doing. I got up in the morning after camping overnight. I went for a short trail run. I twisted my ankle so bad I had to be helicoptered out of the canyon at Supai, the town of Supai. I learned a, I learned a very, very valuable lesson. I had to make a, a, a sort of a leg splint and craft, if you will, some crutches. And I had to hike a mile up to the helipad. And I got up there and fortunately I was able to get helicoptered out. And I learned a very, very valuable lesson. If you're going to be somewhere that remote, don't do silly things. Don't do things that are, are sort of unnecessary for your enjoyment. Uh, you don't have to go to extremes to have a good time. And when you're out in a remote wilderness area or you're in somewhere that's a long distance from a hospital, think about it. Think about what you're doing, you know? Yeah. yeah. You're not going to take your knives and do knife throwing against trees and things like that that could potentially cause unnecessary harm to you or someone else, you know? Definitely, definitely. Yeah, and then I think the only last thing, uh, the only last essential I would recommend is having some kind of an ace bandage or ankle wraps or knee wraps. Because I had my ankle problem and I had ended up having ankle surgery after that, I always bring an ankle wrap along, whether I use it or not, it's in my rucksack. Just in case uh, you sprain an ankle or twist an ankle, you can put that on and and that'll help you get out too. You know, again, I'm, I'm thinking about even... Valley of Fire. I mean, I had my water, three liters. I had my sunscreen. I had my hat. There mm. was nothing else. I mean, my first aid kit was safe and sound in the car. <laughs> right. You know, again, it was a well-traveled trail. Would have been very inconvenient, but I would have been okay. Mm -hmm. There is a, I don't know, it's a, it's a, I don't know, mindset. I, oh, I don't need to worry about it. And I think that gets us into a lot of trouble. Right. Because, oh, it's a short hike. Oh, don't worry about it. You're not going to need that. Yeah. I mean, I've got a good friend that doesn't like the word adventure. I mean, I use the word adventure all the time. And I'm an, I consider myself an adventurer. And uh, I, have, I have a friend who says, I don't like adventure. I'm like, why don't you like adventure? He said, because the definition of ad adventure is when things start to go wrong. <laughs> right. You know, the unexpected. He, you know, to some extent, he's he's right. I, I see things a little bit differently, but I think you can only be as prepared as, as you can be. And you just can't prepare for everything. You know, I mean, you could be out, out in the middle of nowhere. I've been out in the middle of nowhere on my road bike 100 miles from anywhere and a tornado comes up. 
you know, I mean, just things happen. Yeah. But that brings me to uh, recovery. And I think let's talk about vehicles for a second, because this couple, they had two flat tires, they abandoned their vehicle. They did leave a note, which I think is also very important to have pencil and paper along that you bring with you in your rucksack as well. Leave notes everywhere, leave multiple notes. And I think it was really valuable that they left a note in their vehicle saying where they were going, where they were headed, how much water they had on hand, and all of that. We, we have yet to understand what, what happened to the gentleman that perished. Uh, that could have been just about anything. But when it comes to recovery on your vehicle, I think there are some basic essentials everybody should have if they're planning on going on any kind of an adventure or road trip where they're going to turn off pavement and go down a dirt road, no matter if the road looks totally passable and graded. It can get, you know, what roads can get washed out, things can happen. And so you should have these essentials. In my opinion, if you're going to road trip and you, that road trip's going to in, include going off pavement, you should really have thick sidewalled all-terrain tires. Even if you don't leave them on your vehicle all the time, you only put them on when you're taking a trip like this and you swap them out. Thick sidewalled all-terrain tires are designed for off-road soft roading you know, things like that, where there could be loose rocks and a pointy rock, you, you don't notice it, you're, you're, you're picking a line with your vehicle going down a hill or up an ascent, and you don't realize that there's a sharp rock sticking out and it hits the sidewall of your tire. If you don't have the right tires, it could puncture your tire, whereas an all-terrain tire is more or less designed for that. Now, you can still get a flat, but chances are pretty good that you're going to be able to get out of that unscathed. On that note, a full-size matching spare tire is essential. So if, even if it's just for these kinds of short weekender trips where you're going off pavement, have a full-size spare tire. And in, in some cases, I don't do this. I have a full-size spare, and then I empty out my spare tire carrier, put other gear in there. But having a full-size spare and the donut could be also very helpful because now you've got the opportunity to replace your tire twice if you get a flat tire. And in the case with this couple, they lost two tires. So I don't, I'm not really sure how that came to be, but they might've taken off one tire and put the donut on, then they got another flat. So having plenty of options when it comes to replacing your tires, I think is really, really important. Sure. And on that note, test your jack system before you leave the house. Make sure your jack works, make sure all the parts are there, make sure you know how to use it, practice replacing a tire. If you've not done it very often, make sure you've got the right tire irons to be able to get it off. If you have a lock, uh, a locking lug, make sure you have the key for the locking lug so you can get the wheel off. Because that oftentimes people forget that the wheels that they have on their vehicle might have a lock on there. One of the lug nuts is a lock and now they're stuck. They can't get it off. I'm really trying to think right now. I mean, I went off-road a couple times this past season and one, and I did have thick-walled all-terrain tires. I mean, I bought my car, the, the, I brought the Crosstrek but what I loved about it, it came with the Geolander, yeah. Yokohama, some nice tires that look good, cherry red, very sexy. Yeah. But I never even think about the full size spare. And I'm thinking there where I was, I was with other people and I will never go back there again because mm -hmm. you just were, you just never know. But <laughs> it would have been great to have that full size spare. And I will tell you, I haven't even given the fact that I have the donut and the jack system in the car. I have no idea. Yeah. Is this one I'm familiar with? Now I'm thinking, oh boy. Just no. I mean, even if you don't, even if you don't go off pavement and you're on the highway out in the middle of nowhere in Nevada, which I've been, when you're going from the backside of the Sierras up there by Yosemite National Park back to Vegas in the middle of the night, there's nothing out there. No. And I've been out there and if you get a flat tire, you put a donut on, that's great, but you can only go a certain mile per hour with a donut. Right. You know, if you put a full size spare on, you can go back up to your 60, 70 miles an hour, whatever you're going. We're going to have to have a conversation about rooftop carriers now because <laughs> that's the only place it's going to fit. <laughs> right. Now, in your case, you don't have a rooftop tent on there. You could throw a Yakima rack in a cage up there and throw a full size spare on the roof, and you would be smart to do that. And then you could also carry some rotopacks, gas canisters, and that brings me kind of the next thing. You should have at least three to five gallons of gas with you at all times. You figure you're getting 20, 30 miles per gallon. Uh, you put three gallons of gas in a, in, a, in a gas canister, you know, you can get pretty far. And even if it's not to another gas station, 
that can be enough gas to get you back to pavement. It can get you to fairly well-traveled highway or whatever the case may be. And that could save your life as well. I think this couple, uh, they left their vehicle and cut across the desert. And I think uh, one of the reasons they did that was because the road back to, to pavement that they were on was something like 25 miles. Oh boy. Uh, in, in their case, I'm not sure. I don't know anything about what happened and, and I'm not going to venture to guess. Uh, I think if I had a flat tire that I couldn't replace, I might still try to drive that vehicle on the rim as far as I could back, you know, or something like that. Mm-hmm. I think it would be worth damaging the rim of your vehicle because uh, you can't drive it anyway when you're out there. It'd be worth damaging the rim of your vehicle to get back 10 miles if you could and then walk the other 10 or something. You know? Right. Uh, that's right. a possible solution. I don't know their situation or what happened. Um, and it might only work in certain circumstances, but that could be a solution. And then that also brings me to the other thing is traction boards. I was going to ask have, you about that. I'm, I'm thinking... Yeah. I needed to get some traction boards. Yeah, and you don't have to get, I mean, I have Max Tracks and I have another brand that I got on Amazon and kind of a no-name third-party brand. I have the full-size Max Tracks. Max Tracks, I keep those in my truck. The Subaru, um, I forget the brand, but they were much, much less expensive. They're much shorter. They're only half the length of a typical Max Tracks. They're not that expensive. Having four of them could go a long way to get you, getting you unstuck from a riverbed. You know, in the, in, in the desert, Oftentimes the road cuts across, especially the dirt road, cuts across a sandy riverbed and you can easily get stuck in a situation like that. And if you have traction boards, that'll definitely help you get out. Something uh, I'm curious about, and maybe it's on the list that I'm trying to, I'm, I'm actually thinking, say, what's Scott going to say next? What's he going to say next? How about shovels? Definitely bring a shovel. Absolutely. 100%. Okay. In fact, the other thing, a shovel and toe straps. So a good example. I took my Subaru up into the mountains of Arizona. It was um, warm in the desert, but I, I got it. I think it was in December, uh, two years ago, climbed up into a, a high mountain peak area that was on a, a forest road. And I got three quarters of the way up there and there was a lot of snow. And we got up there. I was with uh, one other person or two other people with me. And we came across a guy in a Jeep Cherokee that was stuck by himself in the snow. And if we wouldn't have come up there, he would have been there overnight by himself. Cold temperatures below 30. Uh, freezing. Well, we were able to use the toe straps that I brought along, traction boards, and a shovel to dig him out and pull him out with that, uh, with the Subaru. And I have um, Cusco tow hook on the front of my Subaru, so we use that to pull him out. He didn't have any of those things along. He didn't have all-terrain tires. He didn't have traction boards. He didn't have a toe strap. uh, He didn't have a shovel. He didn't have anything. He was, uh, he had slid off the road into about, I would say, six foot deep bank of snow. Yeah, very important. So I have a a question. Again, I, I'm perhaps I'm being you know self serving here. So I bought the the cross track number one. It seemed like good for me. I probably I would have liked a little bigger, like the Outback, but I couldn't get into it. Uh, it's cut a little bit lower. Yeah, neither here nor there. If I have a new car, I mean, some cars look like they're ready for all terrain, but they're not. Mm-hmm. I mean, the cross track has good clearance, and it's kind of built for you know, a little light off road, not, ex- not extreme. Right. Are there, if, if I excited, you know, COVID-19, it's put us in a position where we can still get out, take our family. We buy a car that helps us do that. Is there some, besides the full size spare, mm-hmm. okay, is there some, and the all-terrain tires with the thick sidewalls, is there some other must do's to the car to get it prepared for at least doing a little bit of off-roading stuff that you can think of? Well, I think it's kind of, it depends on the vehicle. Uh, There's certain cars I just wouldn't take down a long dirt road, no matter how graded it is, you know, and I'm not going to likely take a Cadillac with, uh, you know, low profile tires and, and, you know, nice chrome wheels, 40 miles down a dirt road in a national park like that, you know, in Death Valley. Uh, So having the, at least having some kind of vehicle that is designed in a way for that kind of stuff is, is, is a value. Now, not every vehicle has options that I'm going to suggest, but most Subarus, for instance, are designed for at least some level of off-roading, you know, or soft roading, uh, the, the Outback, the Crosstrek and the Forester at least. And most of those models, all three of those models, there are aftermarket companies that make skid plates. 
I would absolutely 100% recommend that anybody that plans on going any distance down dirt roads where there could be loose rock that can fly up or whatever, you have skid plates. And in fact, before anybody does any upgrades to their vehicle, I always recommend number one, skid plates under your vehicle. If you're not going to add a lift to your vehicle, you absolutely have to have skid plates. It'll protect everything underneath, uh, at least the, the, the critical and crucial things. And puncturing something is, is not a good idea. No, right? no, not at all. An oil pan, you know, you know, puncturing the oil or gas can or whatever it is um, could cause a lot of damage and uh, strand you, frankly. Uh, so generally, when you look at skid plate systems, you can also look at a brush guard system that can go on the front, that kind of thing. And uh, I usually recommend buying a skid plate system that includes a brush guard And then you can mount LED lights on the front and have plenty of light if you're driving at night and that sort of thing. But the two things, even if you even if you don't have a lift on your vehicle and you can't fit all terrains under your vehicle because it could rub, right? At least having an all-season tire under there, something with some sidewall and some meat on the tread uh, that you know won't rub when you turn the steering wheel uh, can go a long way. So those two things are critical. So skid plate, tougher tires extra gas, you know, traction boards and a toe strap. You know, those would be the the basic essentials. Sounds good. Yeah. Great list. I mean, everything from the essentials to stay healthy and the the essentials for, you know, recovery in the vehicle. I mean, it's yeah. it's a great list and I think I guess my hope is Scott if if we can give people pause to rethink not should I go on the adventure, take my family on this adventure, but have I done enough planning to make sure that I'm keeping myself and my family safe? Yeah, I think that's important. And and on that note too, maps, taking paper maps along, taking, uh, you know, having GPS coordinates along, so long as that you have that kind of power. But if the power goes out and you're on foot, um, and, and you know what else? A portable solar panel. So that if you are out in the middle of nowhere and you're walking on foot, you have the power of the sun to recharge your GPS systems, radio, all the different things that you might need. Now, you should also have things along in case that doesn't work, right? So you need to have, just like I said earlier, you need to have a lighter along and maybe a USB lighter as well as regular matches. You know, you just never know. Be prepared. Right. And uh, as, as an adult, or as the person in, in a relationship that is the adventure, let's say your uh, your partner is not much of an adventure and they're counting on you, they're counting on you. It's up to you to make sure that the people you take with you on your adventures are absolutely 100% confident that you've got their back and they understand that things can go wrong that you that are unforeseen. But for the most part, you've got things, you've got plan A, you got plan B and you got plan C, you know? I love it. I love it. I I think we've really presented a great case for, you know, why it's important to prepare and also the steps to begin that preparation process, both for the health essentials and the the vehicle recovery. Before we head out, Scott, is there anything else we want to add on this topic? Well, I think just don't be afraid to go adventuring. Go adventuring. But just take my wisdom and take the wisdom of other adventures that have come before you and prayer, you know, prepare. <laughs> prayer, yeah. Uh, pray nothing goes wrong. But to make sure you take along everything that you need to, you know, to keep you and your family safe That's and your friends. It's, that's that's the, the fundamental aspect of adventuring, you know. Be prepared for whatever's to come, but be open to whatever might come, you know. I mean, not along with the difficulties can be amazing experiences, most definitely that. Now, this has been a fantastic episode, and I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule. I mean, this, I, I literally, for our listeners, saw Scott's posting, I think it was on Saturday, I texted him, and he goes, oh, yeah. And then here we are today, it's Monday, and we're going to get this episode up as quickly as possible. I'm sure my team is going to enjoy that, but hey, that's what I pay them the big bucks for. Uh, But Scott, this has been an absolute pleasure to have you back on Success Insight and the Outdoor Adventure Series. And thank you for sharing your wisdom, your knowledge, experience, and it's totally invaluable. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. So before we head out, Scott, I want to put in a, a little plug for 
for Expedition and the membership. Maybe you can talk just a little bit about that because I would love for people to learn more about you and your work. Yeah, I think with the, with the success of our YouTube channel uh, that, that takes people on outdoor adventures and provides tips and tricks and all of that that goes along with going adventuring. Uh, earlier this year, we launched the Team 4X membership system. And so we have a member portal that we've built. Uh, we've drawn quite a few people from over 15 states in the U.S., Canada, and the U.K. so far. Uh, it's a really great community of people that have uh, come together of like minds that care about the environment, care about each other, and share lots of wisdom when it comes to things like this. So a lot of these kinds of questions, Howard, when you log in, you can go in there and ask all these kinds of questions, and it'll be uh, the wisdom of, of a whole group of people that are, are avid adventurers. And, and there's a lot of people in there, too, that are new to adventure. We're helping people build their camping systems, helping them figure out what kind of a, uh, aftermarket parts they should put on their vehicles, giving them ideas on places to go and the right equipment to bring along, and uh, how to enjoy themselves when they're out there. So it's a, it's a really great system, and you can find out more about that by going to 4expedition.com slash join. That's the number four and then X P E D T I O N dot com slash join. Fantastic. Well, we will most definitely provide the backlinks to the site so folks can take a look at the work you're doing and hopefully consider investing and becoming part of the Team 4X family. So this is fan. And I know I am. I'm very happy about that. I enjoy it. I actually did another posting today. Oh, great. I was a little late on replying to somebody, but I did reply. <laughs> really just a wonderful library of resources. So thank you so much. I'm so glad we met last year when I moved to Vegas and started to, how do I explore? Yeah. And I think you're, you're an, an excellent example of how Team 4X can help someone. You moved from Chicago out to Vegas. You weren't all that experience out in the West and had to acclimate to weather and the distance between communities and all of those kinds of things. And you wanted to get out there. And I, I just applaud you for getting out there and doing something that you'd never really done before. And it's great to see and hear that you're heading to places like Death Valley to do night photography and all that. I just love that. Fantastic. Well, thank you again. And we'll definitely provide all the links back to your social sites and the website. And I know we're going to have some other episodes with you in the future. And I hope you're open for that. And I, I think it's just, just an exciting genre outdoor adventure. And so yes, I yeah. appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Scott. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. All right, folks, we've just been chatting with Scott Luthold. He is an adventurer and the founder of Four Expedition. And Today was a special episode. I mean, it, it's based on a little bit of sadness of an event that happened not too long ago out in Death Valley. But coming from this event, you know, it was uh, having Scott on to chat about what it means to go out on an adventure and how do you prepare? You know, what are those health focused essentials that you need to keep yourself and your family safe. And we also spoke about the recovery. How do we prep our vehicle, get it ready, get our adventure ready in, in our vehicle for recovery should an event happen? Or maybe we come across an event that's out on the road and we are now in a position of helping somebody else because, you know, in the whole in outdoor adventure genre, it's a family of people who are passionate and as Scott had said, even within the Team 4X family, it's an opportunity to help each other out. And so definitely a lot of great information. I am going to put Scott on the spot if he'll send me the list, hopefully typed up, of these health-focused essentials as well as the vehicle essentials. But we'll have those for you on our show notes. We'll also provide backlinks to Scott's Four Expedition membership site, so you can check it out, and as well as Scott's social channels as well. Okay, folks, I uh, hope you enjoyed today's podcast. Do check us out on successinsightpodcast.com. This is the Outdoor Adventure Series. Please leave a comment, share this episode with your friends, and you can also find us on our Facebook and LinkedIn pages, Success Insight Podcasts, as well as the major podcast platforms, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, Amazon Music, and Spotify. In fact, even on Spotify, we have the Outdoor Adventure Playlist, and that's a growing repository of outdoor adventure focused episodes of the podcast, of which we've just we're gonna add Scott shortly. So folks, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Go out there, have a phenomenal day, go out on adventures, but 
be prepared. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your family. Have a good time. Let us know what you're doing and share with us. But above all, be safe. Okay? And we'll see you on the next episode of the Success Insight Podcast. Take care now. Success Insight is a production of Fox Coaching and First Story Strategies. Find us online, successinsightpodcast.com.